Sunday Dak, one of the most important and fascinating books described in the first century that emerged from the early church, is the only direct contemporary evidence we have about the conditions of life in the church during the New Testament period. Scholars and archaeologists describe this important book as a bridge that leads back to the early Christians. They also suggest that this book was possibly written by the apostles or disciples closely associated with the apostles. In this video, you will learn five important things about the didact that make this book truly special, timeless, and perfectly suited for our modern times. The didact was written in the first century. Its name means the teaching of the twelve apostles, or the didact. It is a book of guidance and was written around 70 AD. It did not enter the canon at the Council of Nicaea because they wanted to close the book, in the case, the Bible with the Book of Revelation, or the Book of the Last of the Apostles. This book has no kind of heresy. It is actually a complement to the Bible, with more detailed instructions mainly about the Christians of that time. In 1873, Philotheos Bryennios, the Greek Metropolitan of Nicomedia, found in the library of the Monastery of the Holy Sepulchre, the library of the Greek Patriarch of Jerusalem in Constantinople, Istanbul, a scroll of manuscripts in Greek dated 1056, copied by a scribe named Leo. It consisted of 120 sheets of parchment containing Chrysostom's synopsis of the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Epistle of Barnabas, the two epistles of Clement, the Didac, the Epistle of Mary of Casobelae, and the long version of the letters of Ignatius, totaling 12 letters. In 1883, ten years after the discovery, Bryennios published the Didac for the first time in Constantinople. In 1887, the manuscript Cod 54 or Codex Hierosolomitanus was taken to the Patriarchal Library of Jerusalem, where it remains to this day. There are other ancient versions of the Didac, Coptic, Ethiopian, Georgian, and Latin. The many mentions of passages from the Didac and writings of the early church attest to its importance. It must have enjoyed wide circulation for some time, being accepted by at least a part of the church as a book worthy of being read in divine worship. Clement of Alexandria cites it once as scripture, an extra help for spiritual growth. The early church in the first centuries used the Didac as an extra source of spiritual nourishment and growth. However, due to the intense persecution of Christians in the first 300 years, they had to go into hiding, and the Didac ended up getting lost. Even after the Council of Nicaea gathered all the books and created the Bible, it couldn't be read by just anyone. Only those with ecclesiastical positions could access the Bible for reading. Today, we have many books to help us with our spiritual growth and knowledge, and the Didac served the exact same purpose for centuries. Much of this material also appears in the Apostolic Church Order, from the 4th century, and in the life of Shnudi from the 5th century. The Didac emphasizes loving God, loving your neighbor as yourself, blessing those who curse you among many other similarities with the Holy Bible. The Didac contains a code of Christian morality. In addition to the code of Christian morality, it also describes the way of life and the way of death, rules that address various aspects of church life, such as baptism, fasting, Eucharist, itinerant missionaries, local ministers, among many other teachings. It is these ancient regulations that give the Didac a unique interest and importance. Regarding the Eucharist or the Holy Communion, it describes some details in chapter 4. First, concerning the cup, we thank you, our Father, for the holy vine of David your servant, which you have made known to us through Jesus your servant. To you be the glory forever. Then concerning the broken bread, we thank you, our Father, for the life and knowledge which you have made known to us through Jesus your servant. To you be the glory forever. Just as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and then was gathered together to become one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. If you carefully analyze these words, they will bring you a glimpse of the early history of the Church of Christ, how the Holy Communion was conducted as the apostles taught, teaching how the words were spoken, the communion among the early Christians. This is something sensational because we can have a piece of history from our early brothers in Christ. Community Life The Didac teaches that if someone comes to you and teaches everything that was said before, they should be welcomed. But if the one teaching is wicked and teaches another doctrine to destroy you, do not pay attention to him. However, if he teaches to establish the righteousness and knowledge of the Lord, you should welcome him as if he were the Lord. 
This is exactly what is said in Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 to 11. Verse 8 says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 of the Didact describe something very interesting and important. As for the apostles and prophets act according to the principle of the gospel, every apostle who comes to you must be received as the Lord himself. Today we see countless doctrines of men, totally different from what the Holy Bible says. These are doctrines that bear no resemblance to the Holy Bible. Yet these ecclesiastical leaders insist on these doctrines of men and vehemently claim they are biblical doctrines. However, ego has dominated their hearts and minds. The didact is an inexhaustible source of knowledge, wisdom, teaching, and practices that have been lost over the centuries. These teachings were exactly what the apostles and disciples did as Christians, which brought them closer to salvation, closer to Christ. The didact also teaches, Welcome everyone who comes in the name of the Lord. Then examine him to know him, for you have discernment to distinguish the left from the right. However, if he does not have a profession, act with prudence so that a Christian does not live idly among you. If he does not accept this, he is a Christ merchant. Beware of such people. This book gives us detailed specifications of the Christian life and how to act wisely. If today we had the didact as an extra book in addition to the Bible, many situations within the church would be avoided, because this book contains all the knowledge, teaching, and practices to be used in everyday life. It contains the oldest prayers and a warning about the end times. In addition to highlighting important themes such as prayer and liturgy, confession, hierarchy, beneficence, ecclesiology, and eschatology, it contains the oldest known Eucharistic prayers and the only reference to baptism by effusion in the first two centuries. In the prayers it teaches not to hate any person, but to rebuke some, and concerning some you will pray, and for some you will love more than your own life. One of the prayers cites what Matthew wrote in chapter 6, verse 16, and the Lord's Prayer, which was the prayer that Jesus taught to the disciples and apostles. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. The didact teaches to pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day, referring to the prophet Daniel who prayed three times a day, just as Jesus, who teaches us to pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. Christians of that time prayed this prayer three times a day. This communion and closeness with God made them strong to face persecution and perform numerous miracles. Perhaps some may watch this video and find it blasphemous to pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day. Remembering that Jesus made the same prayer three times, Peter, James, and John wanted to stay awake, but they were very tired and fell asleep again. Jesus found them sleeping again and went to pray a third time. Regarding the end times, it teaches to watch over one another's lives. Do not let your lamp go out nor loosen the belt of your waist. Stay prepared because you do not know at what hour our Lord will come. This citation of brothers being together is related to Leviticus 26 verse 8, which speaks about the strength of unity and its consequences. Chapter 16 verses 3 and 4 of the Didact say, Indeed in the last days, false prophets and corruptors will multiply. Sheep will become wolves and love will turn into hatred. Injustice will increase, men will hate each other, persecute each other, and betray each other. Then the seducer of the world will appear, as if he were the Son of God and will perform signs and wonders. The earth will be delivered into his hands and he will commit crimes unlike any committed since the beginning of the world. Until the 4th century, the didact was highly valued in Egypt, almost considered canonical, and was mentioned by Athanasius as suitable for catechetical instruction from the late Latin catechesis, meaning to instruct by word of mouth, encompassing the concept, objective, content, history, and method of initiating new Christians into the ecclesial faith. 